Yo, what is going on, guys? This is Jayden Lane back again with another video, and today we are going over the uh, version 30.4.3 patch notes for Hearthstone. Let's go ahead and give a little deep dive into all the changes. Um, so now I don't have to speculate anymore. Uh, so yeah, the <laughs> dev comments, this patch focused on an adjustment to, to the main set. Really kind of disappointing. We have another patch window in a few weeks between expansion announcement and launch uh, when we plan to look at the meta more broadly. So, yeah, I guess they just uh, wanted to have, like, a direct focus on the outlier, which is obviously Big Spell Mage, Tsunami Mage. Uh, I, that's why I like to call it a Tsunami Mage. Uh, Many said introduced major outlier, big spell mage. Although uh, some players enjoy the play pattern, uh, the deck causes frustration due to how prevalent it is and how early it gets its power spike and out how early it basically just destroys the game. <laughs> the goal of these changes is to push, push back the average uh, big spell turn a bit and to shave a little power from the deck while act allowing it to keep its core functionality with the uh, one mini set Taurus uh, getting toned down, we wanted to give the other one some help so that players can try uh, fun another fun vacation destination and make the most of what it has to offer. So, uh, yeah, Portal Mancer Skyla going from five mana to six mana. I called this uh, whenever I was doing, uh, like, whenever I was uh, speculating it. I was going to have, like, a video going uh, over, like, all the. Uh, uh, predictions for it but then I was just like I don't know how they're going to nerf this I don't know how they're going to nerf this so I just decided to scrap it <laughs> because I, I think you you guys would get like old of that pretty fast but yeah Portal Mance of Skyla going from 5 mana to 6 mana I completely agree uh, Surfalopod, um going from a 5 mana 5 6 to a 5 mana 4 4 uh, does that help I mean, kind of, but, like, honestly, honestly, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I think, honestly, it should have been pushed up to six mana. Make make it, like, a six mana five five or something. Kind of like, kind of like a spiteful summoner in a way, but, like, honestly, in the big spell mage and the tsunami mage, it's, like, even better than a spiteful summoner used to be. Um... But yeah, Surfalopod going from a 5-6 to a 4-4. Four, four, I guess that that's a whole lot better. Uh, it's a whole lot uh, easier to deal with uh, as opposed to being a fucking 5-6. That just destroys you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm I curious to see like how this changes, the Tsunami Mage changes and everything. Uh, and then Turbulus is getting changed, going from 4 mana 3-4 three, to a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. I predicted it would go to 3 mana um, whenever I was speculating everything. I didn't know they would change it from a 3-4 three, to a 3-3. Three, three. should have honestly guessed that, but honestly, uh, yeah, Turbulus is fine. Uh, it's in a lot of Shaman decks that are uh, seeing a bunch of play and everything, so... Eh, it it makes it cool for uh, elemental shaman, so I'll give it that. I'm, you know what, elemental shaman uh, gameplay coming out on Sunday. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Turbulus uh, gonna be a whole lot better for uh, a lot of the different shaman uh, decks and everything. But yeah, I, I like it. And then we've got a bunch of battleground changes, so let's go ahead and go over the uh, dev comments. Uh, so it's about making trinkets cheaper, adjusting outlier minion types, and increasing the power of underperforming heroes. For trinkets, we've first we adjusted the cost and effects of uh, many trinkets to bring the average cost uh, closer to about three gold. Second, we increase the d discount for pivot trinkets from one to two i like that change makes it easier to pivot uh it's in here make it more viable options yeah for minion types we primarily wanted to bring down the power of demons yeah i agree demons are like pretty much the most consistent that you can uh force in uh, battlegrounds right now we're also nudging up the power of dragons, pirates, murlocs, elementals, and naga, and adjusting a few individual cards that were over or underperforming. Uh, yeah, dragons uh, have been really fucking bad. Uh, pirates, uh, pirates have been like fringe. 
there's there's games where it can uh, have like the go off turns to uh, uh, be first place, uh, definitely top four material, but like. It, it's it just hasn't been consistent. You have to get like a golden Eliza, golden uh, Titus Rivendare. You got to get the uh, Sky Pirate that uh, gives everything a death rattle that summons the one ones. Um, but yeah, Murlocs uh, getting buffed. Um, I ugh. okay. So like the mid early mid range Murlocs, those are pretty bad if we're being completely honest. But the late game Murlocs, that's that's uh, perfectly powerful enough, <laughs> if we're being honest. Uh, Elementals, I I have had a couple of good games with Elementals. I, I've had pretty uh, good, consistent games with Elementals sometimes. But uh, there have been some times where I haven't had the go-off turns that I've wanted. Or uh i've wanted like a little bit more out of it but honestly I, i'm not complaining that they're bringing up the power of elementals i bring it on <laughs> and uh nagas I, mm, I i don't know about nagas so zesty shaker is absolutely insane but um yeah, like a lot of the other uh, Nagas and stuff like that, they're kind of like uh, kind of weak. But Zesty Shaker is absolutely insane, especially if you get one of them bitches golden. Jesus. <laughs> uh, for heroes, we're primarily focusing focusing primarily on heroes that uh, underperform at all ratings. We'll see how these changes play out and potentially adjust more in the future as needed. Finally, our infamously friend Leapfrogger. Leapfrogger is a very polarizing card that can be fun to play, but also frustrating to play against. You don't say. <laughs> we decided not to directly adjust it right now, but to instead swap out Mana Saber for Kindly Grandmother to make the build more vulnerable. Okay, that makes a whole lot more sense. Less, uh, su less shit for uh, them to summon equals less uh, frogs, uh, death rattles, and everything. We're planning on removing F Leapfrogger in patch 30.6 and swap Mana Saber back in. So get your hops in while you can. Thank God they're removing Leapfrogger in the next patch. <laughs> uh, I honestly cannot wait. I can't wait to just say rest in piss to Leapfrogger because I fucking hate that card if I'm being honest. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and go into the hero power changes. Uh, hero power for Cthune, uh, instead of giving uh, plus one, plus one, and then repeating uh, X amount of times, it's giving plus two, plus one. That's a whole lot better, actually. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I would have been fine if they uh, changed it to uh, plus one, uh, plus two health, and then plus one attack. Uh, but honestly, I, I'm down with the uh, plus two, plus one. It makes it kind of like. Uh, uh, makes it kind of like spread out for like all the different uh builds and everything that you kind of want to make. Uh, but yeah, I I am excited to play with uh, Cthune now. Uh, considering his hero power is decent, <laughs> it's decent now. It's not. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's good, but it's a whole lot better than what it used to be. Uh, the Jailer, uh, instead of giving a minion plus one, plus one, upgrades after nine friendly minions die, now only seven friendly minions have to die. This is a whole lot better because you don't have to have a death rattle summon uh, shit in order for that to happen. Um, yeah, that is that is definitely a whole lot better. <laughs> um, is it good, though? Oh, ah, that, that's, that's to be said, but... It, it definitely a whole lot better. Hope Jailer sees play. Uh, I, I like that. Ragnaros going from uh, where you have to kill uh, 25 minions to get your Sulfurus hero power to now you have to kill 20 minions to get Sulfurus. I have been on the bandwagon that Rag has just been outright terrible. <laughs> Honestly, it is way too slow. Uh, so now, yeah, it, it, it's... It's a little bit faster, but is it good enough? Not really, I don't think. I think you can uh, put it down to 15 and uh, Rag will still be like... Rag will be like decent at that point. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, you have to kill 20 enemy minions for that. So, ooh, yee, yee. 
but I'm I'm curious to see if uh, Rag is a whole lot better after this patch and everything. <clears throat> Edwin's hero power, instead of giving a minion plus one plus one upgrades after you buy four cards, now you have to buy three cards for it to upgrade. I like this. This is a really big. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can just, uh, especially if you get like a really good uh, money build going on with uh, like Bran or Golden Bran or something like that, and then like uh, Pirates or something, uh, Edwin can go insane. I think I think this actually brings it to where uh, Edwin is kind of busted in some ways. Um, yeah, that is that is great. I love that. <laughs> Overlord Sourfang, instead of give a minion in the tavern plus two plus one doubles every three turns, now it gives plus two plus two every three uh, doubles every three turns. Oh, dude, this is still bad. <laughs> you can make it give plus three plus three, and it'll still be bad, honestly, because <laughs> you gotta wait every three turns for it to give uh, one buff. <laughs> Like, you've got Edwin over here that's just, like, scaling uh, after he buys three cards and to, like, the same level that Sourfang does uh, to the plus two, plus two and everything. Like, uh, like Edwin just is a whole lot better than fucking Sourfang. <laughs> and uh, Edwin, you can target your minions or the, uh, or the minions in the tavern. And then you've got Sourfang. You can only give it to the minions in the tavern. Like I, I think I think Sourfang is just bad. I think they need like to ramp up his hero power even more in order for him to see uh, like good play and everything. <laughs> uh, Guff is getting changed from uh, after you buy twenty five tiers worth of cards, get a fr triple to uh, buying twenty. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Rag uh, hero power in a way, where you have to like. Do 20 instead of 25 of like a certain thing. Uh, this is a whole lot better than Rag in, in terms of like you can like get, get it faster. You can get the reward faster than uh, Ragnaros's. But later on like Ragnaros's uh, hero power is going to like be 10 times better than uh, Guff. But that triple award... That that's really fucking good, especially if you you, you can like even uh, cheat it a little bit by buying the little tavern coin because it's like a tier one uh, tavern spell and stuff. So you buy that, that's a free tier. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Guff, ah, uh, mm, I think it's it, it's a whole lot better, obviously. Um, but is it good? No, I don't think so. Maybe you can triple into, like, a really good uh, minion. Um, maybe you can tri triple into something that uh, helps you out. Maybe you get that triple into, like, Bran or something on, like, turn five or something like that. Uh, that'd be really interesting. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't think Guff is that strong, honestly. But I'm curious to see uh, how Guff performs. You got Captain Eudora, dig for a golden minion, uh, then uh, going from five digs to four digs. Oh boy. If you would have told 2019 me that Eudora would have had like four digs instead of five, I would have told you that you were fucking out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> <laughs> because Eudora, whenever Battlegrounds first came out, was absolutely the most busted hero por hero of all time, honestly, at that point in the game. Um, because you just, like, tripled into uh, a four or something on, like, turn five. <laughs> it was, like, absolutely insane. Um, but, yeah, Eudora, uh, nowadays... Not as good as it used to be. It's kind of lost its luster um, due to like a lot of different heroes having like much better hero powers. But I, I am, I'm kind of, I'm keeping, I'm keeping a side eye on uh, Eudora. Honestly, um, I would love to have like a game of Eudora going off and everything. Uh, only thing is. Uh, that the hero power costing one gold and everything kind of messes with the, your uh, turn sometimes. 
But I think it honestly with it being four digs and everything, I'm I'm kind of digging it. Pun pun not intended, but kind of intended after after the fact. <laughs> uh, then we got Carol uh, Carol's uh, hero power from uh, the conviction give, giving it to two friendly minions at the start to uh, three friendly minions. Sure. Um, and I don't think that's enough, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I think you got to start it at, like, four. Because uh, then you can just, like, uh, ramp it up into uh, buffing the entire board by, like, plus two, plus two or something like that. That'd be, that'd be pretty good. But I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think of Kyriel's hero power down in the comments. Um, Pyramid going from uh, give a friendly... In, Starting out with uh, one health to plus two health and then gaining plus one turn each time you don't use it. Um, yeah, it's a whole lot better. It's double, <laughs> 100% better than uh, the hero other hero power. Um, the thing is, uh, you're kind of like incentivized to either use your hero power or like actively use your hero power with the uh, passives and everything. But... Pure mad, you're kind of like uh, you're kind of uh, incentivized not to use it for like at least a couple turns to where you can get it to like five, six, seven health or something like that. Uh, that that'll be really that that's really good whenever you get it to happen. But like honestly, I think you can probably uh, make it to where uh, Pure Mad can give like uh, start out at like plus one, plus two. And then, like, uh, scale by uh, plus one health and then swap to a different one uh, e each time you don't use it and everything. I think that would be kind of kind of good for uh, Pyramid. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Pyramid's getting buffed. Pyramid's not been the best hero uh, in, ev in its time all throughout uh, Battlegrounds and everything, as far as I know. He could have been busted for, like, a format or something, but as far as I've uh, played Battlegrounds, Pyramid has not been broken. He's been, like, just kind of balanced and can have, like, a, a game. Like, you just got to have, like, a really good game in order to get a first place with uh, Pyramid, where uh, as for, like, a bunch of different other heroes, uh, you didn't really have to have, like, a, a lot of the times the uh, hero power, like, really helped you to have the really good games consistently. But yeah, Pyramid going uh, from plus one health to plus two health at the start. I'm fine with it. Then we go down to uh, Ozumat. Uh, whenever you're going from whenever you have space in the combat, so I'm going to plus one one. Uh, gains plus one plus one after you sell a minion. Two summon a two two. I, I, if I'm being honest. I don't think this... I think this is still going to be really fucking bad, if I'm being honest. Um... But if you can, like, like, only thing that really synergizes with this is, like, a big elemental uh, kind of build with uh, Brain or something like that, where you have the uh, Tavern Tempest selling a bunch of minions, uh, having uh, the 5 forward that uh, discounts a refresh or something. Um, that way you have, like, infinite refreshes, infinite minions to sell and everything like that. Then your, uh, your tentacle is going to be fucking huge. Uh, but... I, I don't know is like it was bad as a one one I don't think making it a two two will make it any better <laughs> uh, I think you gotta like uh, bump up the uh, buff effect for it like maybe give plus two plus one or like uh, plus one plus two after you sell a minion and then if it like spirals out of control to where Ozumat is selling way too many minions and getting way too many first place then you can bring it back down but um, I don't know. I, I think, I think like changing the starting stuff can work. Like it worked for Cthulhu, but like Cthulhu is like that throughout. Um, but for, uh, heroes like Pyramid and Ozumat, I don't think that really changes a lot. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, and then uh, the armor changes for uh, all the heroes and everything. Pyramid, 13 armor uh, in both high, rank high ranks and low ranks, and then 10 armor duels. Uh, Cthulhu going to 10 armor in high and low ranks and 7 armor in duels. 
Guff to 12 armor in uh, higher and lower ranks, and then 10 in duels. Carriel going from 12 to high rank, 12 in high ranks to 10 in uh, lower ranks, and then uh, 10 in duos. Jailer, 15 in high ranks, 15 in lower ranks, 13 in duos. Ozumat, 15 at high ranks, 7 at lower ranks. Wow. Wow, Ozumat at 7 armor in lower ranks. <laughs> and then 12 armor in duels. Rag at 15 in high ranks, 13 low ranks, 12 armor duos. Edwin, 15, 15, and 12. Eudora, 13, 13, 10. And Sourfang, 13, 15, 15, 12. All right. And then we've got a bunch of uh, trinket pool changes, the discounted uh, trinkets that are not your type, uh, commonly called p pivot trinkets, are now discounted by two instead of one. Uh, lesser Kodo uh, Leather Pouch, Greater Le Kodo Leather Pouch, and Greater Dalaran Cheese Wheel have been returned to the trinket pool with changes. We'll go over those changes. And then the Greater Darnassus Pie and Greater Twin Sky Lanterns have been removed from the trinket pool. Their lesser versions have been adjusted and moved to the Greater Pool. We got to go over those changes as well. Um, so first to start out, uh, we've got the uh, Dalaran Cheese Wheel going from uh, Minions of the Tavern have plus one plus one uh, for and then upgrades every three times to every five times you refresh. That's a whole lot better considering uh, like Dalaran Cheese Wheel plus uh, like the Nether Pendant and everything worked really fucking good with the uh, demons. I've had like insane demon games where uh, you had like Felbat or like a Golden uh, False Implicator and stuff like that. And uh, Urzuls and stuff just absolutely devouring everything because the, the Dalaran Cheese Wheel plus the Nether Pendant were that insane. Uh, Darnassus Pie going from a lesser trinket that costs one gold to a greater trinket that costs zero gold? What's a lesser trinket uh, effect do? Because I, I know damn well that uh, the fucking uh, greater Darnassus Pie uh, is like plus two, plus two every time you like sell a minion and everything. That's That one's busted, honestly. Uh, but if it's like the plus one, plus one, um, that's still really good. But honestly, why is it costing zero? <laughs> why is it costing zero? Uh, Twin Sky Lanterns going from a lesser trinket to a greater trinket. Okay. Yeah, just basically, you could have just had Twin Sky. Okay, yeah, I guess the uh, cost stays the same. But like the uh, effect of the Twin Sky Lanterns for the lesser trinket is now the greater trinket. Okay. Sure. Uh, calligraphy set going from uh, zero gold to one gold, but the uh, Venge 5 is now down to a Venge 4 for the uh, benefit for everything there. Um, let's see some of the other ones. Uh, Kodo Leather Pouch uh, going from zero gold to two gold, and uh, instead of uh, giving a random friendly minion plus one, plus two, plus one, it gives two friendly minions. Uh, the Zesty Shaker portrait's going from seven gold uh, as a lesser portrait to a greater trinket that costs four gold. Ooh, that's insane, honestly. That's insane, honestly. Uh, you save, like, three extra gold for that Zesty Shaker. Like, you, you get a Zesty Shaker for four gold? Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking taking that. <laughs> I'm taking that, honestly. Uh, Lava Lamp, uh, instead of selling four minions to get a random friendly elemental, you get a five, you have to sell five. Sure, I don't think I've ever seen that one. I don't think I've seen Lava Lamp. And it also costs, uh, two instead of six. Um... Warwalker Scroll, uh, instead of giving it plus two, plus two, and now it's uh, it costs one gold instead of four, and uh, only gives plus two, plus one. That's still really good. Especially it costing one gold. Like, Quillbores, Quillbores, like, uh, kind of like this, uh, <laughs> the Warwalker Scroll one, honestly. Um, the pastry, the Yogtastic pastry, going from six gold to five gold. I love that one. I love the Book of Medivh, too. The uh, one Is that the one that like discovers a uh, random tavern spell uh, every turn? I, I'm down for that. I'm down for that to be three gold, honestly. Uh, Greater Trinket Changes, Dalaran Cheese Wheel going from six gold uh, down to two gold. And then the uh, same effect as the uh, previous one instead of like... Uh, still having plus two, plus two benefit. And then it upgrades every time you... Uh, 
every five times you refresh. Uh, great boar sticker uh, going from seven gold to where your blood gems uh, get, give an extra plus four plus four to uh, three gold that give an extra plus two plus two. Yeah, that's that's a whole lot better, honestly. Um, yeah, that's that's a whole lot better uh, as opposed to like seven gold for that. Like blood gems, they're really good, but like you know you. That seven gold for that, like when you could uh, buy like a uh, golem sticker or a uh, like a quilligraphy set, you know, like honestly, you're just gonna take the quilligraphy set and uh, in the blood golem sticker every time instead of the uh, boar sticker. Boar sticker ain't bad though, especially now where it only costs uh, three gold, but it's it's very static. It's very static with the uh, only one change as opposed to like. Um, something like Dalar and Cheese Wheel, where it, like scales and stuff like that, or Calligraphy Set, where your blood gems scale and everything. Uh, speaking of Calligraphy Set, the greater uh, version is going from seven gold to four gold, so that's huge. But instead of giving uh, plus two plus two, it's going to give extra plus two plus one to your blood gems uh, for the rest of the game after you get the event effect. And then, uh, as I was mentioning, Blood Golem Sticker. Blood Golem Sticker going from uh, 4 gold to 3 gold. I'm I'm a big fan of that. I love uh, going Quill Boars, going Blood Golem Sticker. Just absolutely putting Blood Gems all over the fucking place. <laughs> and then summoning like a 60, 160 or some shit like that. I, I'm like very happy about the Blood Golem Sticker. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and then the greater Kodo leather pouch, uh, going from zero gold to two gold. And instead of uh, giving a random friendly minion plus five, plus five, it gets two friendly minions plus four, plus four. That is insane. That is insane. Uh, conductor portrait going from uh, zero gold to two gold. You still get the, uh, Starling conductor, but whenever you discard a card, instead of playing a blood gem on five uh, friendly minions, you uh, now play a blood gem on all your minions. So that's absolutely sick as well. Uh, probably the most underrated uh, change in here for the trinkets wise. Balladist portrait going from uh, zero gold to three gold. Uh, where you still get uh, lovesick balladist at the start of every turn. But now, your lovesick balladists also give attack. Yeah, that that is absolutely wild. Especially if you can get, like, a brand going, or hell, even a golden brand, uh, with the balladist. Oh my god! <laughs> like, balladists, poor pirates, are, might actually be kind of decent with uh, the balladist portrait. Uh, going from, like, getting upgraded like this and everything. Because now you give attack with that. That's wild. <laughs> uh, Felbat Portrait going from 9 gold to 6 gold. Uh, so, yeah, definitely Felbat is getting nerfed. Uh, we saw that Felbat was getting nerfed in the... Uh, in the preview for uh, the patch notes and everything. So, yeah, it's justified going from 9 gold to 6 gold. Because, uh, yeah, let's just say uh, Fiery Felbat is a whole lot worse. Still decent, but it's not as good as it used to be. We'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, Bob's Tip Jar, uh, one that I frequently uh, take sometimes. Gain 3 gold increase uh, in, in by max gold by three to game four, increase your max gold by four. That that one I like. Uh, Greater Book of Medivh going from five to four mana. I like that. Windrunner Necklace has been honestly pretty fucking uh, overboard in a lot of times. So uh, I'm happy to see it go from uh, plus 20 attack to plus 15 for the leftmost uh, minion in combat. Like, I think Windrunner Necklace has been a little bit too abused by both pirates and undead, honestly. Um, hell, I even used the <laughs> fucking Windrunner Necklace uh, one time playing undead. I got, like, top two, I think. I think because, like, the uh, other build was just, like, a bullshit beast uh, <laughs> build and everything. Uh, and then, Karazin Chess Set. Going from uh, nine gold... Start of a combat, copy, uh, summon a copy of your two leftmost minions to five gold, 
but you only summon a copy of your leftmost minion. So, uh, yeah, now you can't summon two copies of, like, uh, if you're playing as Curator, you can't summon a Reborn uh, Amalgam with, like, a Leroy with Taunt or something like that. You can't summon, like, an extra of those. You can only summon the Reborn Amalgam. <laughs> and it has to go leftmost. So if you have, like, a uh, Divine Shield, uh, big attack, big health uh, thing uh, with Taunt, uh, yeah, your <laughs> Amalgam isn't going to do a lot. And then minion pool changes, Mana Saber been removed, Kindly Grandmother and Slither Spear, Lord of Gains have been added to the minion pool. Uh, so yeah, let's go over the minion changes. Salt Scale Honcho, as I like to call him, uh, Mike Honcho, <laughs> as a reference to Talladega Knights. Uh, going from a, a 3-2 to a 3-3, honestly, I thought they were going to change the uh, effect as opposed to just like the base stats. I think the changing the effect would have been a whole lot better, but then, yeah, like, because you, you don't see, this is kind of like how I go about for uh, Thundering Abomination, which is also getting buffed later in the, in the patch notes and everything. Early game, good. It's decent. <laughs> Late game, really fucking bad. <laughs> so... I, I think, like, if you were to change the effect to be something a whole lot better, like, uh, I, I, I was thinking, like, after you play a Murloc, give a friendly uh, Murloc other than it plus two health as opposed to just plus one health. I think that would have been a whole lot better. Um, but, yeah, I guess they just decided uh, to uh, just slap on a health call of the day. Uh, and it looks like they did the same thing for uh, Mercules. They made a 5-2 go to a 5-3. Uh, I was thinking that they were going to do uh, uh, give a minion in your hand plus 3 plus 3 for Mercules, honestly. I think that would have been a whole lot better. Um, because, yeah, like... I, I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should they have ch touched the effects of uh, my Concho and uh, Mercules? Let, let me know. Uh, we've got Lock Prince going from uh, a 2-2 two, 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 to a 3-2, and then uh, whenever it gains stats, add plus 2, plus 2, going from that to plus 3, plus 2 to that amount. Uh, that's a whole lot better. So, uh, yeah, Mer Lock Prince is uh, still really good uh, early on for Murloc builds. Um, but now it has a little bit more extra staying power, I would say, with that extra attack. Uh, I was thinking that they were also going to slap on uh, an extra health. I thought they were going to do uh, what I thought they were going to do for uh, Mercules instead of like giving it plus two, plus two. I thought they were going to gain uh, plus three, plus three. I thought that they were going to do that. Um, but I guess they're just going to do plus three, plus two, uh, which, all right. Uh, Merglin Burglar getting changed, uh, going from a 6-6, six, six, uh, where after you play a Murloc, give a friendly minion and a minion in your hand, 6-6, six, six, to an 8-8 eight, eight that gives a plus 4, plus 4. I think that's a whole lot better. Uh, Merglin Burglar is decent, and uh, it can be insane at times. So I am definitely happy to see uh, that it's getting changed a little bit, <laughs> uh, especially with uh, a lot of the end game for um, some Murlocs. Like if you go with the the coral mer the coral, uh, yeah, if you go with that, uh, it just gains like a million stats because everything in your hand is getting plus six plus six every time you play a fucking Murloc. <laughs> I think it's a, a little bit too insane. Now it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit better, but it's still going to be insane though <laughs> for those uh, Murloc boards and everything. Uh, Crackling Cyclone going from a 4-1 uh, to a 5-1. I figured that they were going to do this for uh, the Crackling Cyclone, make it a 5-1 instead of a 4-1. Um, I did toy around with the idea that they were going to make it like a 4-2 or like a 5-2 or something like that. I would have been fine with that, honestly. <laughs> I love me some uh, Elementals, love uh, Crackling Cyclone and everything, so uh, I would have been, uh, been cool with it. <laughs> uh, sleeping Sea Glass going from a 3-3 to a 4-4, a whole lot better than it used to be. And now with, uh, with uh, 
uh, hero powers such as Edwin or uh, even Sourfang, I guess. Uh, sea Glasses is uh, going to be able to uh, bump up a lot more, uh, double a lot more stats or triple a whole lot more stats if you get the triple for it. Uh, lot, not a lot of people get the triple for it, but hey, you know. <laughs> uh, Living Azerite going from a 4-4 to a 6-6. Okay, so that's how they changed uh, Living Azerite. I was wondering how they were going to change Living Azerite. So, uh, yeah, going from 4-4 to a 6-6. I'm fine with it. Like, it doesn't really change the effect, which I was like, how are they? They, they can't really change the effect because... Uh, they can't, like, touch the tier, so I was like, maybe they touch just the base stats, which is what they did. So, you know what? I'm fine with that. Then we've got a couple of demon changes. So, first up first, we've got Pilgrim going from a tier 4-3-4 to a tier 5-3-5. Yeah, Pilgrim has been absolutely wild. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, Battlegrounds games uh, rely on Pilgrim for the tier 4 and everything like that. Like, I've had uh, games where I've gone, like... Uh, Triple Soul Rewind, not Soul Rewinder, uh, Wrath Weaver, gotten a Soul Rewinder, and then, like, gotten a, uh, Malkazar and everything, and then, uh, get a Pilgrim and everything, and then, uh, had Pilgrim with the Nether Pendant and shit like that, and it go absolutely bonkers, uh, so yeah, Pilgrim definitely deserves to be nerfed, um, I, I'm, I'm sad that it's come to this, though, uh, but honestly, it is deserved. <laughs> it's it's way too busted uh, for a uh, tier four minion. Honestly, uh, Malkazar going from a, a tier three four three to a tier four five four again. Malkazar has been uh, just as powerful as uh, Pilgrim in a lot of uh, lower rank uh, <laughs> demon lobbies and everything like that. Um, yeah, like. Malkazar has been uh, really good, especially for Nether Pendant, for Tychondrius uh, builds and everything. Um, yeah, and uh, for Dalaran Cheese Wheel, whenever uh, it was first in, <laughs> whenever it was first in for the trinkets. Uh, so yeah, Malkazar definitely deserve to get uh, changed. Definitely deserve to get nerf. Uh, and then Famish Felbat, uh, going from a 8-5 to a 9-6, and then, uh, for, uh, the effect, at the end of your turn, uh, your demons consume a minion to, in the tavern to gain its stats. Instead, your other demons consume a minion in the tavern to gain its stats. So now, Famish Felbat cannot, uh, eat a minion now to gain stats, which, honestly, I'm kind of fine with. Honestly, I don't really think that changes a whole lot. I mean, Felbat doesn't really uh, gain a whole lot of stats, but honestly, um, it's more so about like buffing all your other minions. And now, with Felbat Portrait going uh, from like nine gold down to six gold, I think a lot more people are gonna play Felbat and then just uh, go for like a uh, go for like a uh, Nether Pendant plus uh, what 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 the fuck else. Uh, Nether Pendant or uh, Dalaran Cheese Wheel plus uh, fucking uh, Dracarian Enchanter uh, plus False Implicator kind of build and everything like that plus Ur Urzul. Um, yeah, I I think Felbat will be fine, but it does kind of suck that uh, Felbat it can no longer uh, eat. He's gonna be famished forever. He's gonna be absolutely. Uh, he's gonna be starving now. <laughs> Uh, Glim Guardian going from a 1-3 to a 1-4, I mean, sure. I, like, Glim Guardian kind of bad, honestly, <laughs> so, you know what, uh, it's now the best uh, tier 1 to start out with in a game if you want a guaranteed win uh, a combat for uh, the first uh, turn and everything, but other than that, I don't know. <laughs> um... But yeah, you can uh, guaranteed win a combat now on turn one with uh, just Glim Guardian. So there is that. <laughs> Amber Guardian, uh, Amber Guardian, uh, going from tier five down to tier four, and instead of a seven seven that gives a friendly minion, uh, friendly dragon plus seven plus seven and divine shield, it's a five five that gives a friendly dragon plus five five and. Uh, Divine Shield. I figured that they were going to do this. I figured that they were going to move it from uh, Tier 5 down to Tier 4. Um, 
I figured that they were also going to touch stats because like a seven a seven seven that gives plus seven plus seven on tier four would have been absolutely busted. But yeah, now it's a five five that gives plus five plus five in divine shield. That's a whole lot more grounded than uh, seven seven and everything, especially especially with Terragosa and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm fine with Amber Guardian honestly. Hunter of Gatherers going from a tier four three five back to tier five as a four six. Uh, whenever it gains attack, uh, you give your minions a uh, plus two health now instead of plus one health. Um, sure. Uh, I was actually kind of fine with the uh, Hunter of Gathers still being a uh, tier four, honestly. I think they could have uh, made it a tier four, three, six with the same uh, effect and everything. I feel like it would have been fine. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, then we've got Clunker Junker going from a tier four three four to a tier five four five. Clunker Junker has been absolutely insane with uh, with builds like a Bran or like Golden Bran into like a Golden Beatboxer kind of build. That has been absolutely insane. It's been basically like guaranteed wins if you can get all the pieces for it and everything. Um, yeah, like it, it's wild. Uh, but yeah, Clunker Junker now going to tier five. Sure. Um, I don't really know how this uh, changes a whole lot. Um, cause like Bran is on tier five as well. So like, you're kind of looking for both of those minions on tier five anyways. So I, I don't know. Let, let me know what you think down in the comments. Grease bot going from a 1-4 uh, to a 2-5 where uh, instead of giving plus one plus one after a friendly minion loses divine shield, now a uh, friendly minion loses divine shield, it gains plus two plus one permanently. Uh, that's a whole lot better. Um, sure. Uh, if you want to go like uh, big mechs and everything like that uh, for the, what's it called? Uh, fucking that... Tier three, three, two. It's really good for that now, uh, especially where you you're like just scaling the attack by a fuck ton. Uh, Ice Fisher going from a tier five, two, two to a tier four, three, three. Sure, Ice Fisher has still been bad, uh, whether it be in tier six, tier five, and now tier four. I think it'll be fine. Sure, um, I don't think it'll be that good, honestly. But yeah, time will time will see. Uh, Crater Angler going from a tier 5, 3, 5 to a tier 4, 2, 5. Uh, sure. Uh, I figured it was going from tier 5 to tier 4, uh, because, like, the effect isn't too outlandish for, uh, Crater Angler to, like, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's not too insane to be, like, tier 5, so, like, it being tier 4, it's perfectly fine, honestly. Uh, stats, sure, they're fine. I think it could have still remained a 3-5 and still would have been perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Myrmidon going from a 3-3 three, three to a 4-4 four, four, uh, base stats and everything. Uh, I'm fine with this, honestly, too. Uh, I would, I love uh, going, uh, buffing the Myrmidon to ma- like a fucking 200-200 to make it like a 400-400 and stuff like that, so... Uh, I, I love to play a couple extra Myrmidon games, honestly. A couple uh, extra Naga games. And then we've got Tide Mistress Athissa. Athissa, I guess. I don't know. But now it's going from a tier 6, 6, 8 to a tier 5, uh, 2, 7, where uh, in, whenever you cast a spell, instead of giving four friendly Naga plus one plus one, now it gives f- three friendly Naga plus one plus one. I, I'm kind of perfectly fine with the. Uh, Athissa going uh, down to tier five. I I love Athissa, so uh, getting to play with it sooner and uh, getting Myrmidon and stuff like that going. Uh, I'm I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, bring that on. I love uh, Athissa and everything. So yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, Thundering Abomination uh, going from a three six to a two six, where uh, now it gives a plus three plus three in combat and gains plus three plus three and permanently whenever there's uh, no space for a minion to be summoned uh, instead of plus three plus two. Sure, like I've ranted about this earlier in the video, but Thundering Abomination just. 
good mid game, bad late game. Honestly, it's kind of like it's kind of like a worse version of Xylobones. Um, I think Xylobones is a whole lot better than uh, Thundering Abomination, mainly because Xylobones you can get on tier three, uh, Thundering A Bomb you get, you get on like tier four and stuff like that, uh, and then like. Like, sure, you can uh, give minions plus three, plus three whenever you summon them in combat. But, like, you know, um, it doesn't, like, keep uh, any buffs or anything like that. Because you can't keep it. You can't buff the those uh, minions that you summon in combat. Per- you can't buff those permanently. Uh, so, you, you can't, you're saying, like, oh, I want to buff the Thundering Abomination. And then once you get to, like... I, I, I don't know. You, you'd just rather spend uh, your uh, turns and stuff like that as an undead player trying to buff your uh, undead attack. Um, so that way they can just like attack and destroy whatever is in their way, whether it be big health or low health or anything like that, instead of just playing fucking thundering abomination. I, I, I don't, I don't have any hate towards thundering abomination. It's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> uh, Light Fang going from an eight six to an eight eight, and then uh, gives uh, the Menagerie uh, plus four plus four instead of plus three plus four plus three. Uh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, love me some Light Fang. Uh, a lot of times I will try and go into a game and try and force Light Fang. <laughs> sometimes, especially whenever uh, back in 2019 and shit, whenever I was first playing Battlegrounds, I would love playing light fang games and everything like that uh i would absolutely try to force light fang any chance i would get <laughs> uh, then we've got tavern spell changes we've got uh two no three uh we've got portal and bottle for uh, duos and everything uh it used to be a tier five uh spell that costs two gold now it's tier four and costs three sure i don't have any comment about uh duos or anything like that Robust evolution going from two gold to one gold, still on Tavern Tier Three, uh, where it's uh, choose a minion, transform it into a random uh, minion of a higher tier. It keeps its stats. Uh, this will be good if you uh, want a, a cheap spell for, like, say, a Naga build or uh, anything where you like buy cards or something like that. Edwin could use that whenever you buy a card. It, uh, helps towards the buffing of your hero power and stuff like that so maybe you can use that uh then channel the devourer staying on tavern tier five going from four gold to three gold uh i really like channel the devourer it it gets rid of a lot of like big statted like kind of useless minions uh so yeah it's been uh, very helpful in that regard so now you get it for one gold cheaper and then for uh <laughs> i love how at the main bottom under everything uh, it has twist. So twist re- d- returning in December. So we got to wait three, two more fucking months to play fucking twist again with patch 31.2. The first major patch, major content patch after the next expansion launch. So that means that we'll get the uh, expansion towards the end of November. It looks like so uh, around Thanksgiving, probably. Uh, it will return for three consecutive seasons based on the Wonders format so uh, that anyone who missed it the first time will have another chance to experience the twists. More information about the specific rules of each individual season will be shared closer to launch. Uh, sure, nobody gives a fuck about twists now. I mean, you, you close it up for like six fucking months and then you open it up for two and then you close it up for six more after that. Like... Uh, you don't give us any chances to, like, fucking, uh, play it. <laughs> Just leave it open on, like, a Wonders format if you're not gonna do anything on it. Like, uh, there, there's a whole lot of that could be said about Twist. Honestly, I, I think they should just scrap twists, honestly. I, I, like, not a lot of people give a fuck about twists, honestly, because of, like, the wishy-washy uh schedule that they go on based on the the fucking launching and everything and then the going dormant for half the fucking year (laughs) uh 
Uh, bug fixes. Dungar could sometimes uh, summon two minions from the core set. Sure. Uh, fix a bug where uh, various hero powers, buddies, and tavern spells didn't work correctly with the bobblehead uh, trinket. Sure. A um, lot of changes for uh, Battlegrounds and everything. Happy about that. Um, but for standard players, I'm kind of disappointed that it's only three changes. I wish there was like at least a little bit more. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think it, the sentiment has been shared everywhere. Like I've seen all the over Twitter, uh, people saying the same things like uh, good, good balance patch for battlegrounds, but for standard, it's kind of shit. I mean, like, I'm happy that Skyla's getting nerfed. I'm happy Surfalopod's getting nerfed. But, I mean, it just needs more changes. It feels like a fucking uh, 2015 uh, kind of patch notes for standard uh, kind of thing. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but, anyways, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that way you don't, don't miss out on any Hearthstone content. Um, yeah, tomorrow will be a deck highlight video of Reno Hunter, Saturday no video, and then, uh, or maybe like a late night video or something like that. I'll, we'll see, we'll see. And then Sunday, uh, I guess we'll be Elemental Shaman. <laughs> so yeah, hope you guys are looking forward to that, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy.